The New York Times reporter Judith Miller sat down with Bill Maher to discuss her controversial history. For those of you who don't know, she's the so-called liberal who did a pro-Iraq war segment, or article I should say, and Dick Cheney used that article to basically make his case for war uh, on all the media outlets, and he did so effectively. So he did the old... Well, it's not just conservatives saying we should go to war in Iraq. It's also, look, we have the liberal Judith Miller over at the liberal New York Times. Even they agree we need to go to Iraq. So why are we debating this anymore? Liberals and conservatives agree. Uh, you know, it's unanimous. Let's do it. So it was very damning what she did. And she's going to be very, very flippant about it here. And she's also going to try to defend her record. Let's watch. But, I mean, if I could quote from your Wall Street Journal article that you wrote, <laughs> plugging your book, you said, okay. no, this was being, you're being sarcastic. You said, I took America to war in Iraq, it was all me. Yes. Okay, so obviously... <laughs> A lot of people didn't know that was sarcasm. <laughs> Seriously? Seriously, I wow. got a lot of people saying thank you for finally, finally acknowledging. Wow. And, and, I, and I said, well, That's you know, powerful, stupid. It really because, is. Yeah, that, <laughs> that's <laughs> extremely <laughs> stupid. And it, I always say it's a stupid country, but they never cease to shock me. <laughs> yeah. uh, well, okay. I didn't want to hog the credit. I wanted to right. give a little to the president of the United States. But, uh, I mean... <laughs> <laughs> Well, I, okay, but um, here, here's, here's what you also said, and this is also your being sarcastic. Well, okay, you say, I had some help from a duplicious vice president, mm. Dick Cheney. There was George W. Bush, a gullible president who wanted to avenge his father. Then you say, and don't forget the neoconservatives who cherry-picked intelligence about Ara Iraq's weapons of mass destruction and fed it to reporters like me. And then you say none of these assertions happens to be true. Right. The reason I might have some trouble with your credibility is that I think all these assertions are true. <laughs> I think Dick Cheney is duplicious. <laughs> I think George Bush is gullible. I think he was trying to avenge his father. I think neocons did cherry pick intelligence. Why should I believe you if I don't believe any of these assertions? Because the information they got from the intelligence community as opposed to those who wanted to go to war, every administration has hawks and doves or hawks and pragmatists. But the information they got was with high confidence that Saddam Hussein had biological and chemical weapons and moderate conf confidence that he did not yet have a nuclear weapon. Now, if you're the president or the vice president in charge of securing the country after 9-11 and you've had an anthrax attack that has killed people and shut down post offices. Not by Iraq. No, no, no. But if you've had all that and you're responsible for the country and your intelligence community says, hey, this guy, really bad, 17 UN resolutions complaining about his lack of candor and his lack of com complying with the promises uh, yeah, he made, I mean, you're going to believe we, we all know he's a bad guy, but the world is full of bad guys. But, right. I, I, but I mean, not all with WMD. Which, of course, he didn't have. <laughs> <laughs> You've made that point for me. This information was coming from the men and women who had gotten Osama bin Laden right, who understood that the country was vulnerable to a biological weapons attack. I was relying on those same sources. They had never lied to me. They were usually right. We had lots of qualifiers in the story. But how can we not tell the American people the information that but, the president well, is getting? Because your job is to fact check. You're the media. That's what you do. You're a journalist. You're a reporter. If you hear a claim from somebody in power, it's not your job to be a stenographer. You don't just say, repeat that again. I want to write that down verbatim. No, you go, okay, that's your claim? Fantastic. I'm going to go use the Google machine. I'm going to go use other sources that I have. I'm going to... Fact check our so-called intelligence with the intelligence coming out of other nations that we trust and respect and we know they're doing a good job behind the scenes. I'm going to make sure here that you're telling the truth because my job is to hold your feet to the fire. My job is to make sure that you're doing right by the American people and you're being honest with me. That's the whole purpose of the media, but she fundamentally misunderstands what her job is. She says it as if like, you know... We don't get it, right? <laughs> She's like, oh, dude, what you guys don't get is I spoke to the government and they told me Saddam Hussein was a problem. So of course I'm going to report it.
But no, that's the problem. The problem is you listen to the government and you wrote it down and you didn't do any extra work. You're bragging that you didn't do your job properly. I mean, look, think about this in any other context. Think about how ridiculous it is. I mean, it's such a, it's such a ridiculous thing to be the fact checker of government and then you go to the government to get your so-called facts. That's like somebody's hired to, I don't know, just to use a random example here, look into me and negative things I do, but their only source uh, to, to check whether or not I'm doing anything wrong is me. <laughs> you know, we're doing a report here on the messed up actions of Kyle Kalinske of Secular Talk, and uh, I spoke to Kyle Kalinske and he says everything's uh, going great and he's never done anything wrong ever. Never made a mistake in his life. All right, there's our report. Let's run it. But that's the exact opposite of how you do it. <laughs> Again, your job is to go, okay, you say that. Now let's put your comments up next to the facts. She acts like, people in government wrong? People in government lying? No. But you know what this stems from? It stems from that old school mindset, man. It stems from that 1950s mindset where everybody had to be like a casual uh, authoritarian. You know, everybody, oh, there's a hierarchy of power and you need to listen to the people above you. If your parents say something to you, gosh dang it, you better listen. If your teacher says something to you, no matter what it is, you have to listen. If, if your mentor or your boss or, or a politician, gosh golly, tells you to do something, you gotta listen because that's how the world works. You gotta be deferential to people in authority. Or not, or you question authority. Especially when you're in the media, that's your goddamn job to do it. And then I can't stand the beginning, like, even Marr was insufferable there, where he's like, uh, that's powerful stupid that people thought you weren't joking when you said I, I took the country to war in Iraq. Judith, don't downplay your fuck up here. I just told you the dynamics of how it works. I mean, it, you had all the conservatives in the country saying, oh, Iraq, gotta go to war, gotta go to war, gotta go to war, gotta go to war. And all the conservative outlets were saying that. But then you made it so that liberals were saying it too. So you gave Dick Cheney the argument of the conservatives are saying it and even the liberal New York Times is saying it. Where's the debate? Let's go to war right now. So yeah, you were a big part of the problem. Now, I don't know if you're solely responsible for it, but you did change the dynamic of the conversation and you made it so that there were a lot of Democratic politicians who maybe otherwise would have taken a stand, but when they go, ooh, even our paper of record, the New York Times, is uh, for the war, I guess I need to rethink this or I guess I need to be for it. Don't downplay it. Don't laugh. You know how many people died in Iraq? Minimum 200,000, and I'm being very conservative there because there's numbers of over a million civilians who've died. Not to mention the people that are displaced, not to mention our own soldiers who died for no goddamn reason when they shouldn't have. Don't downplay it. I mean, what bothers me is that you see here, she's totally, she like, she doesn't have trouble sleeping, doesn't think about it, isn't depressed, isn't bothered. She's like, what do you mean? I did my job, I listened to the government, I put it in the paper, and then uh, the bullshit lies got out there and I helped us go to war. I don't see the problem. What's the problem? The problem is... We don't have a system, we're not supposed to have a system where it's state-funded media. This isn't North Korea. Uh, the, the dear leader says X, so we must do X. No, we're, that, we're supposed to have an objective media that fact-checks, but you're doing the bidding of the government, we might as well have a state media in this circumstance. And then uh, the final thing I want to say about this real quick is, she talks about, like, Saddam having WMDs, then she says, okay, yeah, he didn't have WMDs. And that, that's true, but the, the other thing that bothers me about that is she falls for the same trick that every other idiot in the mainstream seems to fall for when I don't know why anybody falls for this because it's nowhere near convincing. The idea that even if Saddam Hussein did have weapons of mass destruction, and he didn't, but even if he did, is anybody really stupid enough to believe that, you know, he was going to press the button any minute now? Seriously? Because, look, they didn't even have a conversation about the, the first lie, or the first misstatement, if I'm being kind here, of Saddam Hussein was connected to 9-11. Saddam Hussein was connected to 9-11. How many times did we hear that early on? It's almost like everybody now knows, well, that was bullshit, so let's just go to the next justification, WMDs. But wait, 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 wait. If you're going to talk about your record and try to defend your record, why not talk about that first? How the, the main reason for going into Iraq was total horseshit, and we all agree to that now, and it's an established fact. You just hopped over the Saddam is connected to 9-11. Saddam is connected to 9-11. You're not discussing that at all because you know you're going to lose in that front. But this to the second argument of when they move the goalposts, oh, he had WMDs. 
But even if he had WMDs, you then have to prove, you then have to present evidence that we know he was going to press the button and use it against America, so we only did this war for self-defense. And you don't know that. You want to know why? Because that wasn't the case. Even if he did have WMDs, Saddam Hussein, for all of his faults, he was not a religious zealot. He was not a lunatic in the fundamentalist sense. So he knows if I press a button, three seconds later, my entire country gets blown to smithereens and nuked. You're telling me he was going to use weapons of mass destruction in the United States of America. He was going to use it in Washington, D.C. or New York or California. He was going to blow one of our main cities off the map. And he thought in response we would just go... <laughs> How stupid are you? That should have been the main focus of your argument and of your reporting. Even if Saddam does have WMDs, which he doesn't, but even if he does... Well, God damn it! this doesn't mean we should go to war. There's a lot of bad guys with WMDs all over the place, and we know they're not going to press the button. North fucking Korea is way crazier than Iraq was under Saddam Hussein, and they have weapons of mass destruction right now, and we're not immediately fighting a war against them. I mean, stop and think about it, man. They just... Every argument they make is untrue, or it has gigantic assumptions that are total bullshit.